that's a real coup, isn't it, for M Sport, for the WRC. Uh, talk us through how it happened. How long ago were you thinking, I need to get this guy in my car? Uh, to be honest, it's, uh, we were in the same situation 12 months ago. We were really trying to uh, get him into one of our cars then. Uh, he then decided to take a different direction. Uh, but ever since then, we always felt that uh, we really wanted to get him into, into one of our cars. And he's got a close association with uh, the guy who runs my Polish operation. So he's been working very hard behind the scenes. Um, again, it was a, a very last minute decision, but uh, as you can imagine, I'm delighted the fact that, uh, that we've got Robert in the car. And I think already last weekend, he had a, he had a great uh, start to the season. It's great for the profile of, of your operation up in Cumbria and for the sport in general. Are you surprised by how quickly he's adapted and, and how well he's been going in his, frankly, very few outings? No, I think he's, I mean, he actually visited M Sport about four years ago, even before he had his accident, um, you know, in, in, uh, before that. So he's, he's always been very interested in rallying. Um, and he's always, he, well, he's actually, even when he was doing Formula One, he had a, a car as well, and he was doing the odd event that probably a lot of people didn't realize about. So he's got a really good understanding of, of uh, the sport. But I think the thing that's really just shocked me as well is uh, the amount of dedication and commitment that he, uh, that he puts into it. Um, you know, just as an example, because of his uh, restrictions with his, with his arm, I mean, uh, he's been in the workshop. He was there until 11 o'clock, two nights, working with the engineers and designers, trying to reconfigure the handbrake and the gear change mechanism. Um, and the amount of work that he puts into uh, the recce, getting all the video footage and you know, he came to Rally GB and actually had made his pace notes from video, which is, you know, something that doesn't really happen. He's obviously operating at the very top level. He did in Formula One. He was a Grand Prix winner. So I suppose it shouldn't be a surprise that whatever he turns his attention to, he gives it his full commitment and 100% dedication. He's a, he's a top sportsman, isn't he? Well, that's certainly what, uh, what we're seeing. And uh, again, if you look at his performance at the weekend, I mean, very, very strong the whole way through. Uh, and he basically saved the best to last. He, he used uh, you know, what no experience he's got to, with a fantastic tyre choice combination. And, but on, not only that, I mean, if we saw the events last year uh, with, with the WRC2, that some of the times that he was doing in a regional car, um, there's nobody actually got that close to... Um, to a world rally car before. So um, I think, as he said there in the interview, the second half of the season is the events where I think, you know, the tarmac events, which he's already done this year, he's going to, I really think he's going to be very strong. It's all part of a, a really big change for you guys uh, for 2014. You've got uh, Miko Hervenen coming back. He won a lot of rallies for you uh, in, the, in the Focus and the Fiesta. He's joined by Elvin Evans. So you've got a top Brit in the team. Very exciting times for you. Yeah, it is. It's it's fantastic. I mean, uh, okay, Miko, you know, he's he, he had great success with us. Uh, he's had two difficult years. I just hope that we can get him back to into his winning ways. And what I want to see from Miko is that uh, I want to see him smiling again at the end of a stage and when he comes into service. I haven't seen that for the the last couple of years, and I, I feel that if he's if I can see that, then I know that he'll be driving uh, to the best of his ability. Um, there's no question he's, you know, he, he pushed Sebastian Loeb on a couple of occasions for the championship. And I just hope that, you know, by bringing him back with us, we can re relight the touch paper. Um, and really, you know, he, he'll be a, a good mentor for Elvin. And I hopefully, you know, I think it's everybody, we have to face the fact that Sebastian Ogier is going to be the favourite for every rally. But everybody knows that if you apply a bit of pressure, then that's when mistakes can be made. And hopefully, we, you know, Miko can be there to sort of capitalize on that. Moving on to uh, Elvin, I think it's a fantastic opportunity for him to um, uh, get the opportunity to do the whole World Championship in a WRC car. We're not expecting, and please, I don't want everybody else expecting a lot from him in his first year. We, it, we just want him to get the finishes, get the experience. If we can achieve one podium throughout the year, then I think he lived in a, a fantastic job. I think when he took sixth in Sardinia, first time out in a World Rally car, people sort of thought, hang on a minute, uh, the, the, the pressure's on now, isn't it? He set the bar quite high very early on. Yes, he did, but I think, uh, again, you've got to be realistic. I mean, you've heard Robert say there, at, you know, it's not the easy thing to come into the World Championship and do you know, the events that you've never done before. 
I think uh, technology is definitely is helping a lot of these guys now to to get there quicker than what it, what it used to take. You know, you, we always used to say it was five years to from the moment you started in a WRC car till you could actually win. But I think we've seen already that that uh, gap is now coming down due to the technology of you know cameras, onboard cameras, and the, the guy's been able to look at a lot more detail, get the pace notes perfected better. Um, so you know, I, I don't think it'll take Elvin that long. Um, and as you say, he had a great start, but uh, it's, still, um, it's still a long season and a lot of events that he doesn't have the knowledge of. And it, it starts with the most difficult event in the Championship, Monte Carlo, with the conditions that you're likely to encounter. So it's just important that we, we, you know, he gets a solid start and a, a reasonable finish. Looking at the bigger picture, uh, you've got a top Brit uh, in a top seat. Chris Meek is obviously running with the, in a factory Citroen. Good times for the WRC ahead. Hyundai are back. Are we seeing a, 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 a really important turnaround for the sport now? Well, it's great that the fact that we've now got Hyundai, VW, uh, Citroen, and obviously ourselves. We're, so I think, yeah, I mean, it's been difficult times for WRC. There's no question with the loss of the promoter a couple of years ago, the new promoters sort of bedding themselves in. Uh, we're starting to see some light at the end of the tunnel. So, and I think there's no question why, as you t t mentioned there, the two British drivers back in WRC, you know, hopefully, you know, that will bring us back to the days of the Colin and, and, uh, and Richard. So I think um, the foundations are in place. I don't think it's, we're going to see, you know, what we had previously, certainly this year, but I think it's something that, uh, I think the platform's there to build on. I think the, promote, the new promoter, uh, Red Bull, they've been quiet, haven't they? Have they been deliberately quiet, working away in the background, plotting things? Has it been a frustration that there hasn't been uh, the sort of communication you'd like? Are, are we, are we going to see a change there? Yeah, there's no question. We, 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 we have been frustrated, and I think everybody, every, <coughs> every rally fan will be frustrated because there's no real rally on WRC on TV in the UK. Uh, but that's not the case in a lot of the other parts of the world. Um, I think there's steps ahead now to hopefully uh, address that issue. And there's no question, we've, as definitely all the manufacturers have been disappointed with uh, the fact that it is Red Bull, Sportman, Media who've taken over the, uh, the rights of the WRC. But I'm, uh, I'm a little bit more optimistic. I think there is light at the end of the tunnel. As you say, I think they've been getting all the information that they need. They've been understanding the sport. Um, because the people, you know, they don't really have, uh, that are involved, don't have the knowledge. So they've been uh, building up their information, and I, I'm really confident that um, we will see a change this year. There was a lot of love at the, uh, in the middle of November for Rally GB, the move to mid and north Wales. There were lots and lots of fans out on the stages. Everybody was very happy, um, and it's great, isn't it, that Britain is represented properly, not just in terms of drivers, but in terms of a, a flagship event as well. Well, it's, it was a case it had to happen, uh, to be honest. We were, we were slowly falling off the map with Rally GB, so it was, uh, it was a fantastic move to, to take it up to North Wales. As you say, we had uh, more spectators than we had for I don't know how many years. So it was a very positive step, and I'm pleased to see that uh, they've got additional sponsorship now for another two years, so hopefully that gives them an even better platform to build on. Yeah, there's a few little things last year that need to be addressed, but um, you know, for the for the first time, and to create what they created was uh, was a big step, a real positive step, um, and it was needed. Honestly, otherwise, I think uh, we would have had no WRC event in uh, no no British event in the WRC if it hadn't changed. A uh, quick word about uh, M Sports other activities. You're obviously uh, very much in bed with Bentley now in the sports car arena, and. Had a, a fantastic debut in Abu Dhabi. Um, is that something that sort of you found has, has been very hard work? Or have you sort of taken to it uh, quite well? Well, it's completely different when all my life I've, uh, I've never done any racing. So Abu Dhabi was my real first um, involvement with racing. So um, I, I always said right from the outset when we started speaking with the Bentley people, I wasn't really concerned about, you know, the design and engineering side of the project, but the area there where M Sport had no knowledge was obviously the racing uh, side of it. Um, but I'm pleased to say that, um, you know, once we've been an, a, appointed as a people to do the program, then uh, 
there's a lot of people actually in M Sport that had been involved in racing. So we had actually quite a bit of uh, experience in there. And um, for me to go to uh, Abu Dhabi and not really be in control was a little bit different to, to you know, doing a rally because obviously uh, that's all I've ever done. But uh, I, I must admit I was um, really surprised and I, got a, I can understand why you know, the people get uh, so attached to the racing side of it. And um, it's certainly something that I'm really looking forward to. I think we had a great, we had a great debut with the car, really pleased with the, the performance. Still got a lot of work to do. We've got a um, big test coming up in Portugal at the end of the month. But um, as I say, really encouraged with the, with the performance of the car. And the car was quick. It was running third, wasn't it, after the first part of the race and then finished fourth against people like Porsche and Aston Martin and Ferrari who've got years and years of experience in the GT racing arena uh, on, on top of you. Yes, I mean, uh, for sure. I mean, uh, I was a little bit disappointed in one sense, um, you know, because you're, you're right, we were third, which was very strong, but our last sort of five rally cars that we've designed and developed and built at M Sport, we've, we've won on the debut. So I had a personal target, but, uh, you know, it had to be realistic. And I think, as you say, what the guys did was, was fantastic. We were, you know, in, in qualifying we were, for a while, we, had a, we were sitting on the top, top step so you know the, the great thing is as, as I felt right from the start that we could produce a competitive car and um, we've just got to now improve on all the on all the racecraft. Good to see you again Malcolm um, I think you're going to be busy aren't you in 2014? Yeah for sure if I'm doing all the WRC because I've never missed a WRC event since we took on the contract from Ford in 1997. You've been to every single one? I've been to every single one yeah. Wow. That's commitment. Um, have a great season. Uh, thanks once again for talking to us. Ladies and gentlemen, Malcolm Wilson.